How you going guys? So today we're going to be doing a timing belt and water pump on Dan's cruiser here. So I thought I'll make a video on uh, how to do timing belt and water pump. So we'll first go over and have a look at all the parts we're going to be using. So when you're doing a timing belt, you do a timing belt on a cruiser after every 150,000 kilometers. Um, and because of that, you know, it's not very often you do it. So you shouldn't really cheap out on parts. Um, if you're going to use cheap parts, then just don't do it at all. So what we've got is we've got what's this? That's the fuel filter I think. Yeah. It's not related. So we've got a genuine water pump, so a genuine timing belt. Now make sure you get the timing belt for your year model of engine um, because 1HDT, uh, 1HZ, there's a few different lengths of timing belts. FTE should all be the same, but just don't use an FTE belt on it at 1HZ or something like that. So pay close attention to that. They do change. For the genuine thermostat, because we're going to be dropping the water pump out, we're going to be dropping all the coolant. So we'll give the cooling system a flush and new thermostat. We've got the gasket for the thermostat, don't forget that one, they're separate part numbers. We've got some new radiator hoses because we're dropping all the coolant. <laughs> you want to change them at the right time and some new hose clamps. We've got the genuine tensioner. Now uh, this comes preloaded. If you're using 1HZ or 1HDT, they're just a spring. Um, so it's a little bit different to an FTE. Then we've got the tensioner idler wheel. Brand new one of those. The bearings in those do fail, so make sure you get a new idler wheel. Top radiator hose. We're popping the um, cam backing plate off to remove the water pump. So we need a new cam seal. Um, if you're just going to do the, the um, timing belt, you won't need to worry about that or dropping the coolant. But it's probably a good idea to do the water pump at the same time. Uh, because it is behind the timing belt, so if you, with a water pump, it's best to replace it before it fails rather than when it fails because it's quite a pain in the ass, especially if you know, you're know you eight hours up north and your water pump fails. Um, it's not going to be very fun. So we've got lots of rags, got lots of parts. We've got coolant, genuine Toyota coolant, Toyota Red. Again, you're not changing your coolant very often. Best to go with the genuine stuff and it's really good stuff. Um, it's also not a very good idea to mix coolants like different brands and stuff like that. Try to keep it the same. Got a uh, torque wrench to torque up all the bolts. And a grapple gun. You'll need this to get the cam bolt off. Um, you can hold the cam with a shifter. It's just a little bit easier to use rattle gun. So before you do it, if you don't have one, talk to one of your mates that has a rattle gun and use that first. Much easier. First up, what we're going to do is, because it's still hot, um, we're not going to touch the radiator cap just yet, we'll let it cool down quite a lot so it's not pressurised. So while we're waiting for that to happen, we'll um, remove the radiator fan, it's just uh, four 12mm bolts. And then we'll remove the shroud, pull the radiator and shroud out. Then hopefully that by that time the coolant's nice and cold, we can drop the hoses, drain all the coolant. We'll leave the radiator in, just take all the hoses off. Then after that, it's just a matter of pulling the timing belt cover off and everything comes out. Alright, let's get stuck into it. Alright, so this is the radiator cooling fan. Now it's a viscous fan. So it's got 12, four 12mm uh, nuts holding it onto the water pump. So leave all the belt tension on, that way it won't move. Well, not a lot. And then we'll uh, loosen those. Once we've loosened all those, it does sit on a bit of a, uh, like a spigot. Um, so we've got to wiggle it off. And then we'll drop it into the shroud, loosen the shroud off, and then take the shroud and fan out as one unit. Um, you won't get the fan out with the shroud in, you've got to take them off together. Off she comes, so we'll just drop that into the shroud. Undo the shroud, pull it out as one unit. Alrighty, so we've taken the uh, top hose off and drained the radiator, or it's currently draining little drain tap on the bottom of these ones which is quite handy. So now we'll grab the fan, try not to uh, gouge the radiator pins. Here she comes. Okay so we've taken off the aircon idler pulley, uh, loosened up the power steering res. She can just access this so the cover's off now. From the cover you can see the timing belt replacement date from the 47,000. So she's time for a uh, time for a change, and you can see 150,000. It used to be 100,000 on uh, 1HZs and FTEs and stuff like that, and Toyota's since changed to 150. 
So these idlers are filled with oil, um, and they're like a sealed hydraulic um, tensioner. So this one's leaked. And this idler pulley here is uh, about stuffed as well. So she's definitely due. Now that tension there, uh, it is quite loose, but um, when you turn the engine off, the cam will sort of rock back to where it's going to sit on a lobe, so you will get a little bit of looseness here. When we crank the engine over, you'll get its true tension, so we'll do that now. So now we've rotated the engine slightly, see the tension's back in the belt, so some people will get pretty scared when they pop this cover off and they go, oh my god, my belt's stuffed. No. That's not correct. So when you turn your turn the car off, your cam, if it's you know if it's sitting on top of a lobe, it will just rock back, and you'll get so the cam will rock this way, and you get that tension in the belt. Um, so just turning it over a little bit will show you a true belt tension. So it's still it's still good, uh, but that tensioner has failed, so it wasn't far off. So now what we'll do is we'll turn it to a bottom dead center. So you can see, if you just come around the front here, Dan, there's a marker here. Um, so this one's TDC, and the one at 12 o'clock is bottom dead center. And you can see the marking on the cam here, the cam gear, right there. So we need to turn the engine over clockwise until the marker goes to there. And on the injector pump, there's another marker here, and there will be a little notch out of the injector pump gear and both of those have to line up. If they don't line up, it's out of time. It shouldn't be because this car's been running for several years. So we just confirm that it's aligned first, and then once it's all aligned, we can take the belt off, put the belt back on, we know it's in time. If you just were to take off the belt right now, and this cam moved, you're, you're in the shit. It's gonna be very difficult because on a diesel, the valve to piston clearance is only about three mil, so trying to align back up again it will be a nightmare. We're getting very close to the bottom dead center marking. Now the harmonic balancer or the crank to the injector pump is geared, and then this is a belt. So when you rotate up to it, go nice and slow, because if you miss it, you don't want to go backwards, um, because the lash and the gears will upset. So your true indication will be a little bit off. So if you do go over. Go back about a quarter of a turn and then come forward again. So I've taken off the tensioner and the idle pulley. So if you come in here, you can probably get a bit better of a look at that um, alignment mark on the injector pump gear. Right there. It is a very small notch. Um, and as for the TDC marker, it's down here. It's a bit hard to see, but that's the TDC mark, which you very rarely use. Um, unless you're doing a valve set, but you just you got the harmonic balancer or all the cam pulley is the easiest. So now we're just going to undo this. Hopefully, we can get in there, which is proving like it's going to be a job for a, uh, a small socket. So, I'll get one of those. So, when you undo this, the cam will move a little bit. Don't stress when we actually do the cam belt, we can just move this a little bit, it's not going to move much. I do that by hand, you're just, you're just gonna break shit. Um, this bolt is 72 foot pound, but when it's been on there for six years or so, it'll be a little bit tighter than that. So it doesn't have a, it has a key on it. Um, when it's at BDC, the key will be directly 12 o'clock. Just make sure you don't lose that. Very important. So we'll put this to one side in a safe spot and then we can take off the cam backing plate and do the water pump now. Should be able to pop the cam backing plate off without taking the cam cover off, but to do this bolt back up, we'll need to hold the cam. Bit of a pain in the ass to do all that with the FTE, so I'm hoping I can uh, lock the cam gear and torque it up. It's only 72 foot pounds, so my rattle gun should get it anyway. Um, so we'll see how we go, because to take all this off um, is, a, is a bit more work. So we'll, we'll try first, and if we fail, then we'll do it the correct way.